this is Richard. Um, my channel is Dinners with Donna, but we've moved kind of out of the, but well, we still cook, but we do a lot of unboxings and um, my Trader Joe's shopping hauls now. Um, while I've been unable to go live when I wanted to. Um, so we're going to do a Universal Yums unboxing today. Um, <laughs> yum. <laughs> um, what, um, Universal Yums is, they have three tiers of subscription boxes. I get the middle tier, which contains between 10 and 12 snacks in each box. And each month you get a different country except at like holiday time they do it from around the world and it's a collaborative thing so you get snacks from all over the world but each month during the year you get um a box with snacks from a specific country so let's see what this month's box has for us Ooh, we've got scandinavia that's very interesting. Okay, so on this card, this is our scorecard on the back. It's a scorecard. On the front are all kinds of facts and landmarks and, and trivia about um, Scandinavia. It says, welcome to Scandinavia. There's Iceland, Sweden, Finland, Denmark, and also Norway. Um, you know, there's Viking ships and the cathedral and um, igloos, all things representing Scandinavia on this. It's really cute. We have 10 snacks in this box, so it should go pretty quickly, Richard, aren't you happy? <laughs> and then, um, you know, you can give the team rating, which is your favorite yum, your worst yum, and your weirdest yum. We always do that anyway. And then we have some express yourself the Scandinavian way, so you can learn some um, Scandinavian phrases which I cannot pronounce except maybe the skull which is cheers so skull <laughs> and uh, there's a scavenger hunt and all kinds of stuff um and that's just on the card we haven't even gotten to the um booklet which is right here very cute and um it's like a wolverine or something on it what is that the wolverine or it's a giant wolf and a viking uh Away we go to Scandinavia. Hej. Hello in Danish. It's H E J. I don't know if it's hi, hey, hej. I don't know. But um, if you speak Scandinavian or Danish, let me know um, if I'm saying that wrong because I probably am. <laughs> and I apologize. <laughs> it says before you dive into your snacking, we've got some sweet tips for uh, to help you spice up your Universal Yum's adventure. Grab a pen always have our pen. Turn up the tunes. You can um, uh, scan the QR code on here and they will play some Scandinavian music for you while you open your box. How nice is that? Um, they like you if you want to to take pictures of yourself with your snacks and tag them on Universal Yums on uh, their social media. Um, it says embrace Haig, Haig and Lagom. As we enter the winter season, the Danes and Swedes are getting into the spirit of Haig and Lagom. The concepts of coziness, well-being, balance, and moderation in life. With the holiday season upon us, it's easy to get caught up in the noise and excitement. What are some ways you might bring Haig and Legome into your life to make this season a peaceful one? Interesting. I would unplug from my devices. That's what I would do. Okay. So they always have a, a customer spotlight, um, a yum maker highlight where uh, one of the, you know, um, producers of the snacks is highlighted. Um, and it says, hello from Scandinavia. Get ready to explore not one, not two, but six countries. We're hopping on our Viking ship to see the Scandinavian Peninsula, Sweden, Norway, and Denmark. So another, and again, this one is a regional box. Usually it's a specific country. So now we're Scandinavia, which is a region, of course. Uh, so we are um, exploring the Scandinavian Peninsula, which includes Sweden, Norway, and Denmark. 
and the surrounding Nordic countries and territories, which include Iceland, Finland, and Greenland. Uh, the countries in this region have a shared history, but enough culture that cultural diversity to make each stop new and exciting. Ready to embark on this month's voyage? So it says, what is on the cover? Remember I said, what is this exactly? And it's probably Norse mythology, if I had to guess. Oh, well, there you go. In Norse mythology, it said that the great wolf, Fenrir, Fenrir, F-E-N-R-I-R, -E would fight against the gods at Ragnarok. Ragnarok. Ragnarok? Ragnarok. That's like Thor. <laughs> the final battle. Isn't that weird how I equate it to Marvel? <sighs> so bad. Okay. The final battle of the gods versus giants. Fearing this prophecy, the gods had a powerful rope called Gelf Gelfner. I have no idea how I could pronounce that. Created that was strong enough to restrain Fenrir. Through trickery and betrayal, they were able to use Glenifer, I'm so sorry, to restrain the great wolf, but it cost the god Tyr his right hand. It's quite possible that the god's betrayal of Fenrir is what caused the prophecy to come true in the first place. And then they have a, a thing here about the Arctic fox. Um, all across the Lapland regions of Scandinavia, you'll find a certain ferocious floof, the native Arctic fox. These opportunistic hunters will dive headfirst into the snow to catch lemmings, voles, and other rodents. Their white and gray coats make it easy for them to blend in with their snowy surroundings, which is perfect for both hunting prey and escaping predators. So there you have it. We have our trivia train. Get one of those every month. And now we can get into the snacks. Oh, and I forgot to show you the stickers. We always get stickers. We got Scandinavia, and we've got a sticker of the um, fox for the most wild and fearless case tester. That's him. And <laughs> try everything or else. Uh, <coughs> the picky eater one. That's more you, I think. And then we have for the trivia stars. So whoever wins trivia gets a little star. So those are really cute. So now we can dive into our snack. And we're going to start with that one. It is the Kim Snack Chips Tomato and Spice Potato Snack. Super crispy, cheesy, with an acidic tang. And it says, back in the 19th century, getting a snack like this together would have required a lot of Danish spice traders, cayenne, garlic, and paprika. There are a lot of spices in this snack. Because of their extensive travels, Danish spice traders often remained unmarried, earning the nickname Peppersvens, Peppersvens, or Pepper Dudes. Ah, basically bachelors. Today, this bit of history has spawned a spicy tradition. If a Dane is single on their 25th birthday, their friends will tie them up and coat them with cinnamon. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> if they're still single on their 30th, they're doused with pepper. How rude. <laughs> We'd probably opt out if we had the choice. <clears throat> Think of the sneezing, it says, unless these uber popular cracker crisps were involved. One bag has 130 calories, Ooh, five bad. grams of fat, mm -hmm. 19 carb, one gram of fiber, and two grams of protein. Oh, not a bad snack then. Okay. They look like little... They have ridges. Kind of between a ruffle and a bugle plant. No, it looks like, you know what it looks like? It looks like part of a um, pasta shell, that like, you know, the stuffed mm -hmm. shells. Mmm. Those are yummy. I like it. I really like them. They're different. I like the spice combination. 10 out of 10 for me. <clears throat> I get my 9. Mm hmm. Very, very good. I could picture eating those watching sports or a movie or something. Okay, so now we have cocoa-filled oat cookies. Oh, that's a big package, my goodness. Oh, 
Okay. Crispy cookies with a rich chocolatey center. This story might sound like a Hans Christian, Christian Andersen tale, but it's real. In 1864, Karen Wolf was born in a tiny village in Denmark. As a teen, she worked as a kitchen manager, developing her skills as a chef and businesswoman. By age 26, she'd saved enough money to fulfill her dream, opening a bakery. Her treats soon went over Copenhagen of uh, socialites, her business exploded, and Karen Wolf became a household name. The best part, her happily ever after is a happily ever after for us too. 150 years later, we still get to savor her crispy chocolate filled cookies. So, oh, it looks like hearts on the, on the package, it looks like hearts. <laughs> it's really like a little lace cookie. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have a plate. I'm gonna... Quarters is good. Okay. It looks like those little lace cookies, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm hmm. Mmm. It tastes like them too. I wonder if that's the original. Could be. I do. Mm hmm. If I didn't have all these snacks to try, I'd, I'd eat more. <laughs> Um, those we might keep. Those are good. I really like them. I give them a 9.5 out of 10. Me too. My only thing is I wish they had resealable packaging. That's mm -hmm. my, that's my 0.5. But other than that, they're, they're yummy. Okay, next we have a Jill and Chai potato chip. Scandinavia's favorite flavor. Have you ever smelled or tasted a spice and immediately associated it with a particular cuisine? For India, it might be cumin or perhaps tangy mustard seeds make you think of Germany. But across Scandinavia, and particularly in Sweden, dill is the herb that immediately makes you think, ah, yes, this is Scandinavian food. From tangy pickled herring to, dish, to garnishes for cured salmon, this distinctive, distinctive herb makes an appearance in more dishes than we can count. It's no surprise that locals crave the herb so much that they've also added it to crunchy snacks like these potato chips as well. Take a taste and you'll be just as obsessed. <clears throat> One bag has 210 calories, 13 grams of fat, 300 milligrams of sodium, 19 grams of carbs, three grams of fiber, less than a gram of sugar, and three grams of protein. Okay, yeah. Here's a nice chip. Looks like a nice potato chip, wavy, ridged. And I smell the dill. Mmm. I really like them. I give them a 9 out of 10. Give them an eight. They're not my favorite potato chip, but they're, they're a little good. salty. Yeah. But very good. Okay. Next up we have raspberry gummy skulls. Ooh. Um they 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 have skull. What did we rate those? I said a ten. Okay. Oh you didn't rate rate the last one? Down. I think you said an eight. Yeah. Yeah. Um I think they're under there. Yep. Uh, sweet, sour, and super chewy. In Sweden, citizens have the, quote, right to roam, meaning they can legally walk, hike, swim, and most importantly, pick berries on any land, public or private. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? Locals take full advantage of this policy, spending hours combing Sweden's dense forests for fresh berries from tart blueberries, a favorite of the Scandinavian brown bear, to super sour lingonberries. I love lingonberries to sweet orange cloudberries, the most coveted variety, wild raspberries. With these juicy, chewy raspberry gummies, we're granting your taste buds the right to roam the Swedish forest of candy. How peculiar, <coughs> they're skulls. All the stats are not in English. Okay, so we're just gonna go for it. It looks like a warhead. That's sour. Is it? It's like a warhead. Mm -hmm. 
but it tastes better. Very sour. I don't think it's sweet. I don't think it's that sour. Sour, sour. sour. <laughs> I was thinking sweet and it's sour. It's not that sour. Um, I think it's a good gummy. Mm -hmm. Um, it's fresh. It's not too chewy. Um, it's not that sticky. I give that an eight point five. I give it a nine. Now we have a yum bag, and the yum bag has like individual little things in it. Um, what we're gonna try next is a chocolatey cookie dough ball. Creamy Swedish cookie dough filling, yum. Get this, the delicious cookie dough filled chocolate ball you're holding in your palm originally started off as a honey capsule. What's a honey capsule? No idea. Uh, well, no one knows. Well, there you go because their founder, Carl Prinzel, quickly realized they were a bust, a true pioneer of the International Day of Failure. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, soon after, he began making small plastic packets of hazelnut cream, which eventually turned into hazelnut cream-filled balls, which turned into these cookie dough-filled balls 100 years later. Talk about a sweet success. That's no moon. It looks like the Death Star. <laughs> I like the packaging. I like the blue and the colors. That's pretty. Oh yeah, I guess they all have that at the bottom. I don't know why. Hmm. It's got cookie dough inside. Mm-hmm. Do you have a cross section? Hmm. And that's interesting. It's good. Yeah, but what kind of cookie dough? To me, it tastes like oatmeal. <laughs> it does kind of taste like oatmeal. I think it's oatmeal cookie dough, which I don't, I'm not opposed to. I, I don't mind it. Um, It's just not chocolate chip cookie dough. It's, it's oatmeal. That is oatmeal cookie dough. Mm -hmm. And I like it. Um, especially like at holiday time, it's, oh, I, I like that. I give that a 10. Me too. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're back to the yum box. We have um, gingerbread, toffee, peppercock, cola. That's what it says. I'm not swearing in Swedish or anything. It says it right there. It says, when it comes to gingerbread, the U.S. and Sweden have a lot in common. Swedish gingerbread, locally known as pepkoker. Yep, I know that because I used to make those with Sam's um, grandmother, her paternal grandma. Um, she used to make pepkoker cookies in the shapes of hearts, and they were so good. It's a traditional holiday treat considered essential at Christmas parties. And just like in the U.S., the spice cookies are commonly used to construct elaborately delicious gingerbread houses. Pepper coco cockshoosh. Oh boy. Looks like a caramel. Mm -hmm. But there is one gingerbread tradition that sets Sweden apart from the US and you're holding it. Locally referred to as knock or knock, I think. The chewy toffee is infused with all the festive flavor of peppercocker, no baking required. Now it looks to me like a Werther's almost. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure Richard showed you the things. I like these little yum bags. Those are fun. Mmm, I look like a Werther's. Have you ever tried pepper corker? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a ginger snap. What do you think? Some kind of spice in there. It's good. A little too chewy for me. <laughs> um, it's kind of sticky. Not my favorite. I don't mind it. 
It's kind of like, you know what it reminds me of? It's like between, did you ever have a squirrel nut? Yeah. A squirrel nut and a maple chew. Do you ever have those? I don't like maple chew. I know. <laughs> Put together. Um, it's kind of a nostalgia thing for me. It reminds me of the candies my grandma would have in the house growing up. Um, again, not my favorite either. I give it a six. I give it a 6.5. It's a little too chewy. What's with the 0.5, do you, Jeff, or something? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it kind of softens the blow. <laughs> if I give him a little, little nudge. So next we have jalapeno pepper popcorn. Well, that's funny because... Not yet. Not yet. Um, this is funny because, you know, I don't associate jalapenos with Scandinavia. But let's read what it says. It says, spiced with seasoning from central Denmark. Oh, interesting. We have a wonderful man named Klaus Pagard, a.k.a. Chili Claus, <laughs> to thank for this wonderful yum. In the early 2000s, a Danish-born uh, Klaus Pilgard first tasted spicy food as a university student in London. It took him nearly 20 years to try some heat because in Denmark, spicy food is not so common. I didn't think it was. He was so excited about the spice, he began growing his own chili peppers, then making videos sharing his violently spicy peppers with Danish celebrities. <laughs> Since then, spice has slowly crept into Danish cuisine and popcorn. Well, there you go. A serving size is two cups. There's two and a half servings in the bag. The big bag. 160 calories, 11 grams of fat, 270 milligrams of sodium, 11 grams of carbs, 3 grams of fiber, and no sugar, and 2 grams of protein. Alright, try this. It looks like good popcorn. It's kettle cooked. Mm. Have water. I've dropped some. Where? Oh. <laughs> I like it though. That's good corn. That's good popcorn. It's a real good flavor, but it's got that. Have yeah. a drink, Bio. Unless you can take the heat. Mmm. I like it though. It said it's jalapeno popcorn. It delivered on that. It's high quality popcorn, kettle cooked. Um, I have no complaints. I give that a 10 out of 10. It's exactly what it said it was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Me too. Mm -hmm. Boy, it has a kick. I like that. <laughs> okay. So next we're going back to the um, King, uh, Kim Wolf, Karen Wolf, sorry, uh, cookies. This time we have a rum icing coated cookie. Crumbly cookies with decadent rum flavor. Um, in Denmark, sweets are particularly... No, they're practically a national pastime. In fact, it's like you've already tasted Danish cookies without even realizing it. You know those big tins of butter cookies you see during the holidays or in your grandmother's house? The tin should be full of cookies, but it's actually full of sewing supplies. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Those are Danish butter cookies. Personally, we think these cookies iced with delightful and alcohol-free, by the way, it says. Rum flavor are even better. And don't worry, you won't find your grandma's sewing kit in this box. So this is the same maker of the cookies we tried earlier, those ones that were like the oatmeal lace. Um, so I'm curious to see how these are. Four cookies have 160 calories. So 40 calories in a cookie. 10 grams of fat, 70 milligrams of sodium, 18 grams of carbohydrates, one gram of fiber, and two grams of protein. All right. Oh, just show them. They did not travel well, folks. <laughs> They're all over the place. Go ahead. What's that one? I'll take that, that one. icing? The nice little cookie. Mmm. That's a good Danish butter cookie. Although, the cookie itself is perfect. The icing doesn't taste like rum at all. I'm I don't taste any rum. I taste vanilla. 
I'm all the way iced with Danish butter cookie, which is funny because I wouldn't have thought to do that with a butter cookie. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't even know they could do that because they're, you know, as you know, the Danish butter cookies, because they're made with so much butter and everything, they're very fragile. That's why they put them in the tins because it would protect them um, rather than a, than a bag, which, well, you saw what happened to those. <laughs> but um, yeah, I give it a, a nine out of 10 just because it said rum and it did not taste like rum. It tasted like vanilla, but I, I, I'm not opposed to that. I like it a lot. I gave it a nine also. All right. Now we're back to our yum uh, bag. We have brown butter truffles. Mmm. Meat sweet and secret ingredient. The secret spice that makes all Swedish food delicious isn't a spice at all. And if you haven't already guessed by the name of this yum, we'll tell you now. It's brown butter. I love brown butter. It's so good. By gently simmering it, the ingredient light caramelizes, creating a warm, nutty, decadent flavor that goes amazingly in sauces. Very true. In Swedish meatballs, baked into cookies and transformed into luscious chocolate truffles like this. We don't have stats on these. And again, it has that little hole on the bottom. It's almost like it's put on a platform or something that's taken off when it's done. That soft center. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a truffle. Mmm. Very nice um, mouthfeel. It like melts when it hits your tongue like the truffle should. Mm -hmm. Um. That's what I love about these. Um, is because even though they look big, like they, they were like like that yeah. big. Um, because they melt the, and they're so soft, it's not heavy at all. Very good. I give that nine out of ten. Me too. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yep. The reason I didn't give it a ten is for me that one a little bit on the sweet side. It was really sweet. Yeah, uh, like too sweet. Um, but other than that, it was good. I mean, if you're, if you like chocolate, you'd love that. Sam wouldn't like that. No. <laughs> okay, this, she is weird, but we love her. She's ours. <laughs> All right. I think we'll keep her. <laughs> we have our last treat, and then we have a game. Uh, our last treat is a raspberry filled dark chocolate bar with Danish jammy filling for max indulgence. Danes love their raspberries. They love them in, oh man, Hindbarschnitter. H-I-N-D-B-A-E-R-S-N-I-T-T-E-R. Hindbarschnitter. Snitter? Snitter? Mm -hmm. I'm trying, guys. I really am. A mouthful of a word, but basically a fancy Pop-Tart. Well, why didn't they just say that? <laughs> just kidding. Um, they love them in cold pudding, rod, broad, med, flowed. I'm really trying. They love them in fluffy layer cakes, donks, la que gosh. <laughs> you say that. No. <laughs> but they especially love them in chocolate. This chocolate covered raspberry jelly is mirror-like on the inside, so shiny, it's almost too pretty to eat, almost. You should easily be able to adopt the position of the Danes and polish off this raspberry confection in no time. One bar is 110 calories. That's not bad. 1.5 grams of fat, um, 21 grams of carbs, zero protein, Lots of sugar. Yeah, always lots of sugar and candy. The 110 calories for a whole bar. That's not bad. The Let's picture see. looks like dark chocolate, but the, that doesn't. It looks like, you know, those little sticks of jelly, like mm -hmm. you can get with orange, and it, that's what it looks like to me. That's the inside. Mm -hmm. And that's what it tastes like. Mm -hmm. Very good. Raspberry jelly coated with chocolate. 
keeping that one. <laughs> it's dark chocolate. Mm hmm It's very good. I give that a 10 out of 10. Me too. Mm-hmm. We'll polish that off later. Okay. So now we have a game that I'm not going to play because it'll take a lot of time. But I'm going to um, give this over to our, our friends, Kellen and Kaylin. It says, play one of Scandinavia's oldest games. Get ready to hop into the time machine because we're headed to the 1820s. If you were a Danish or Norwegian sailor in those days, odds are... I was. I was wondering about that. That explains a lot. <laughs> I wonder why you get tired so easy. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you were uh, sailing in those days, odds are you'd be passing the time with a game called Gnav. Gnav? Gnav? G-N-A-V. Gnav? I'm going to say Gnav. Traditionally, with either a deck of cards or a set of wooden pieces, this game is part luck, part strategy, and can be played with up to 10 people. While the game has fallen out of popularity in modern times, playing a round or two of Knob will instantly transport you back in time and give you a great idea of how people once had fun in Scandinavia. And there's the instructions are in there, so that's, that's helpful. <laughs> okay, so, um, and then they have a recipe in here for more, more broad greed. <laughs> Danish pork stew. If anyone can pronounce these things. Oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Nordic noms. And then there's all kinds of stuff in here. Uh, myth matching, Norse edition, win at winter. So there's a scavenger hunt. And then of course our nutrition facts if you can't read them on there. But yeah, so that's our box for this time. So I think for me, the winners of the day would be the raspberry uh, bar we just had with the chocolate and probably that lace cookie. You gave four ten, five tens. I gave five tens, yeah. That was the cookie, right? Mm -hmm. And then the raspberry, yeah, I gave both of those tens. Um, the, the, the crisps. The crisps, yeah. And the popcorn. There were a lot of winners in this box. I like Scandinavia. <laughs> and for me, there there wasn't really a bad thing. I guess it would be the toffee just because it was so hard to chew. Was that the thing I gave the lowest rating yes. to? Yeah. <laughs> See? Me too. Yeah. So that was my, you know, best of and worst <clears throat> of. Um, there wasn't anything weird. Um, so I don't have a weirdest uh, to choose from, but what, what what are your thoughts? I liked the raspberry thing the best. Yeah. And the popcorn was good. Yeah, those are your top two. What, what was your worst thing, the toffee thing? Toffee, yeah. Yeah, I agree. But I overall, this was such a fun box. I like Scandinavia, so yay, Universal Yum. This was fun. Um, if you're interested in trying Universal Yums again, not a sponsor, um, I, I get these myself just because I, I have fun with them. But I will put the link to them in uh, the video description in case you want to check them out. Um, like I said before, they have three tiers of subscription boxes, but they also have a shop where you can buy any of these things individually. Um, sometimes they're sold in packs of six or something, um, but like a case or whatever. But if you really like something, like I might get a case of the. Of, the, of these, well, in a pack of six, yeah, that, they're yeah. not that bad. 110 calories in the whole thing. Um, not bad. And we'd probably just split one. So that's 55 calories for a snack. Not bad. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Scandinavia was a big success. Um, I hope you guys like this. And if you did like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and make sure that your notification bell is click to all so that you know when we have a premiere or a vlog or a short or if we go live again you never know it seems to be rare nowadays but you know you never know it might surprise you <laughs> which is like uh-uh <laughs> but thank you so much for watching if you made it all the way to the end we really appreciate you thank you so so much for your support it means the world to me 
I had so much fun sharing this stuff with you guys and I love doing the premiere so that I can chat with you you know about the box and and what we've tried and everything that that's fun for me so thank you so much I, I appreciate all of you and um I guess that's it for now we are gonna sign off so thank you so much um you know remember to be kind to each other be kind to yourself uh, do something nice for others and be patient and kind and gentle with everyone and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye! Bye. Bye.